start. I'm going to make a quick statement. What I'd like to propose to the board is we take a quick step back for a second. I would like to propose that Peter ask us the questions that would allow him some clarity on the big issues. And then we circle back, have another study session in the next couple of weeks where we could dig into these in greater depth and in a different format so we could actually start knocking these things out. I think that the way we're going right now, we're not going to get the outcomes that we all are seeking. Um, and so what I would like to do is uh, have uh, uh, Director Maurer continue with a few questions, this board ask, answer them. Then we will ask, ask the plan, ask, uh, staff to bring this back for another study session in the next couple of weeks where we'll sort out further detail because there are implications of some of the stuff we're talking about that need more work so we could figure out some paths forward. And I'd like to, our experts, our staff, I would like them to help guide us through some of those in more detail. So does any of the board members have a problem with that? And we'll wrap this thing up. I, I know. Uh, and then we'll have, with the further questions at the next day session, we could go into greater detail, greater depth and public comments specifically to those items. Because I you know there's a lot of people here who want to talk about specifics, and how it's going to impact them. But I want to I want to make sure that's okay with the rest of the board members. Would the board consider um, the next study session to be a night meeting, um, so that you can bring people who normally aren't able to be here because well, they're working? Let's do let's do that. We want to do it this route, and then we can talk about what time we want to do it. So let's answer question one first. Are you guys okay with answering a few more questions from Peter, and then continuing the study session? in a week or two, or a couple of weeks, depending on when we can get a date together. And it'll probably, go ahead. Yes, so, and sort of. Yes. I don't mind ask, sort of commenting on some broad brush things. If there are things that you specifically would like us to do our own home, to do homework on, like maybe read the state law so we know what we're talking about. Um, so that when we come next time that we're prepared to answer some of the little more detail, the nuances to some of these. Peter, um, I mean, I just think we have as board members an obligation to do our homework too and not just say, oh yeah, okay, you know. But, you know, something broad based like, do you want to continue cultivation or not? That's pretty broad based. I like that one. Supervisor Stopper? Uh, I, agree, I agree with Marita. Yes, I am willing to consider another study session, but I think part of our agenda for that study session should include the, the questions in it so that we can do our research, so that we know what we're dealing with specifically before we walk in, because that, that's part of the whole of what we're trying to figure out right now. And that way we can come in and say we did our due, due diligence for our positions. I, I agree. Dennis? I wasn't expecting to end the study session with a whole series of questions. I think true. If we had had them vetted to us in advance and had an opportunity to, to do our own research or to ask our own questions to you for clarity, uh, that would have been very helpful. Uh, I think even from the audience's standpoint of being able to see what those questions might have been. Uh, so you folks, the folks in the audience have just been surprised with all these questions too and all of a sudden we're making these decisions that could impact a lot of lives. So uh, having the questions and maybe some nuances of if you answer this, this is some of the things that might happen so that everybody can clearly understand here's the result of this question. Uh, would give us, I think, a, a far more in-depth uh, understanding of what we're really going to do and the relationship with each one of these questions to the final result. So it would seem like we've got four votes. It's a second time. It's good. Four votes a second so, time today. Uh, with that, um, the second question posed by Supervisor Mills was time of day for the study session. He suggested evening. Um, I would suggest uh, just because of the cost of staff time and overtime, um, and bandwidth for all of our tired brains. Um, 
we do it at a regular daytime meeting, but what's the opinion of the rest of the board? Day. Supervisor Stopper? Day, first week of the next month. All right. So we'll, we're gonna, we'll circle back at the end and see if we can find a date. If we cannot find a date, uh, we'll have to go through a regular process amongst the board. So with that uh, day meeting, Peter, take us through the questions that you need to take us to the next study session. Okay, I think we're sort of in the midst of two questions right now, and I have two others that I would like to get that could give us sort of a, a jump start of refining those questions that we can certainly provide to you in advance and let the public see that. Um, so we'll talk about zoning. I think we're almost there. Um, I think the question was how to handle the RR and the unclassified. I think where we are at was that those would not be permitted, but there is an avenue for someone to apply for a zoning <coughs> amendment if it's appropriate, or to apply to relocate to another site uh, that meets our criteria. Is, is that where we're at? I, I would like uh, you to come back. Go ahead, Ben. Our, our, our was somewhat where we're at with that, with what you just said, but you, uh, that was where the debate was at, and we were, I mean, I, I was a yes on you, so. I would like to, you know, obviously, I think you understand what some of the challenges are. Uh, we don't want it in residential communities. Mm -hmm. We have RR scattered all over the place in the hodgepodge, which we'll solve in the next general plan, but it's not gonna be solved before we finish this process. So I would like some, some options from the staff on how we might be able to handle that. And, and I have examples of that is I have RR zones that are literally out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they're not even, they're, they're tied next to unclassifieds, they're, they're in strange places. So we, we really need to look at some of these RRs as saying, no, they really don't fit within where they are at the moment. And that has to be part of that discussion as well. You know, just a blanket say, no RRs. I mean, my bar circle, or my, my diamond and circle 20s and bar 20s, that's a whole different issue than being out in the middle of nowhere. We need to figure that out. Yeah. That's the rhyme or reason. There's no rhyme or reason to a lot of the zoning throughout the county. And some of those RRs are over 100 acres. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. Sue Rose Calloway? Um, I'm not um, sold, Mr. Maurer, on... Uh, the unclassifieds, I think. The unclassifieds, we're gonna can be considering rezoning them anyway. And if you have unclassifieds that are 20 acres or more, you know, unless it's in the middle of Meadowmont, I'm not interested in <clears throat> telling them that they have to rezone their property. If, um, I mean, I'm looking now at an unclassified 80 acres, 81 acres, 29 acres, 130 acres. I mean, I think we have a very similar situation um, with the unclassified as we do with those remote, do. not the ones that are in you know, subdivisions, but the right. remote RRs, very, very similar uh, situation. You know, maybe the solution is that we require a use permit for those and we can look at those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, otherwise, if we try to figure out some way to say these are ours are okay, but these aren't, then we get into an issue with zoning and, and consistency and with zoning. Rights. Peter, are you talking about an AUP? Yeah. Could be AUP or CUP. Um, AUP which would be? Is, I mean, the, the difference yeah, is that one? the planning director has the approving authority on an AUP. It's, I, it's ideally a less controversial, just making sure you're sort of meeting standards, but there is the opportunity for appeal um, as opposed to a CUP, which automatically goes to the Planning Commission. It's, draw, it's drawn out. I mean, if we want to just get some of these done, if that's the goal, then the AUP is really the only answer. I agree, Mr. I Mills. agree. Oh, <laughs> okay, here it comes. I agree. Four. That's four. Um, but we have to figure that out. And, and the nice thing about an AUP is that you notify the neighbors. Yes. You notify the neighbors. Well, so if we have a neighbor issue, we're going to see it. We, we will, with AUP, because it's discretionary, we provide notice of an environmental document. And we um, notify the neighbors of the um, 
proposal to take action. Uh, and then they, and then we would, you know, solicit their comments, and then, you know, if we need to modify it based on those comments, we might do so. Otherwise, we would take action to approve or deny, and then there's a 15-day appeal period. And we usually see a copy of them at that point as well. So we're yeah. aware of if yeah. the neighbors start calling that something's okay. happening. What's your next question? Okay. Um, minimum parcel size. I've heard a lot of 20 acres. It's got to be greater than 20. Uh, 40. Uh, 20 no. acres is the standard for minimum parcel size for agricultural activities in most of our zones. Right. Uh, so there's a connection there to you know, 20 acres being appropriate for agricultural activity. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right size for cannabis based on all Set the other issues we've talked about today. Like setbacks? Setbacks, odor issues, those kinds of things. Mr. Mr. Conway? Um, so Mr. Mauer, if you're in a commercial area, in a commercial zone, and you have an indoor growth site, what are you saying, that the parcel That's has different. to be? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the outdoor, outdoor mixed light, you know, on, Got on. It. So step back, that's sort of a separate issue of um, we allowed under the urgency ordinance um, indoor only cultivation on industrial zones, Got M1, it. M2, and M4, I believe. Okay. Um, not in commercial zones, but in industrial zones. Um, I think that's sort of a separate issue. I don't think there's a lot of opposition to allowing that to go forward to continue on. So someone who had a registration, I think there were a handful in uh, industrial zones um, that qualified um, that I, I think that the same standards that we had for uh, the urgency ordinance as far as zoning and parcel size in the industrial zone um, is appropriate, um, less some things differently. <laughs> Um, but I think we will also want to go back and revisit the specific standards that we had for those you know, odor control and security and those kinds of issues will need to revisit. Again, Peter, I think it's greater than 20, but again, there's, there's some of those R, R20s that are in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, you're saying I need a parcel size. I... Well, um, I think that we heard very loud and clear that two acres was too small. Is five acres too small? Is ten acres? I, you know, at what point do we say anything over this size? If, you, if you're zoned appropriately and you meet all our standards, we can issue you a permit. If you're less than that, then we won't consider it, or we'll consider it by use permit, um, and that can vary from zone to zone. So the question is, how, what is the minimum parcel size? Yes. For what zone? Just. <laughs> Well, let's start with the ag zones. What's the minimum parcel size appropriate for cultivation in an ag zone? Ten acres. As far as a stopper. So we're able to do it different per every every zoning. Yes. Yes. You could, yes. I could I could deal with ten acres. On ag. On ag. Okay. Which we probably have. The minimum, the minimum parcel minimum. size for. An A1 and an AP zone is 20 acres. AP has its own standards to get into a Williams Act. You have to have 100 acres. Correct. And the only way that you can do that is by a, either so have a parcel of 100 acres or more, or it's a consolidated so number. So we don't of we don't have any any on ag on any of these ag zonings that are less than 20 acres. We zone. have those substandard parcels. I don't know how many there are out there, but you could have an A1 zone parcel that's five or 10 acres, for example. <coughs> Particularly if it's part of a larger ranch and it was made up of a, a number right. of different parcels. So um, it could be that they're um, you know, consolidated if you have three parcels adjacent to each other that are more than a certain size, that that could be a way to. So if, if you have, con what you could do under Williamson Act, if you have contiguous parcels and you have a 10 acre and a five acre and they equal 40 or whatever the minimum is, that's, that's fine. You can still go under a Williamson Act. That's correct. So if we said yes, A1, a 10 acre for the, and they're contiguous to other parcels that the person might own, 
or have the rights to permission to grow on it <coughs> that is equivalent to 20 acres, that would be okay too. I mean, I, I guess we're, I don't look at everything as one size fits all, and so I'm just trying to open up some options there. So, so the options would be we have correct zoning with a minimum parcel size of whatever it's allowed by right, by right if you meet the criteria. Between ten and twenty acres, you could say it requires a use permit, or it um, has you have to have at least twenty acres in the um, aggregate and the of, of contiguous parcels in order to qualify there. There's a lot of different options here, and I think what I'm trying to get at is the bigger picture of you know, where do you draw the line. Is it 10 acres? Is it 20 acres? Is it whatever it may be? Um, we got, <coughs> we've got three votes for 10 acres. Okay. In the ag zones. Mm -hmm. The so, ag Residential zones. agriculture. Anybody want to start? I, a quick question. How many RA parcels are within... HOAs, but I would be surprised there are few. many. I don't know. I don't know the answer. That's that per question. Dennis. But, yeah, but I think that most of the subdivisions with CCNRs, homeowner associations, are zoned RR. And development yeah. agreements. Yeah. Okay. So I, 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 I can't say there aren't any, um, but I, I think that the number is probably. I can find you a few. Sure, you probably could. Uh, so but, uh, you know, how, how many RAs, if you go through this list real quick, I have the list, I can look at the same time, Ethan. You, you, you all deliberate for a second. I'm going to look at this list and start getting this. I had a total of seven zoned RAs greater than 20 acres. Then greater greater than, than 20, yeah. but we're talking 10 right now. No, we, we're not well, talking any number one. That was A1. Ag, 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 ag 10 acres. Okay. And I guess just to reiterate the, the purpose statement of the RA zone was for the equal emphasis on residential and ag. Um, this one's too small. We'll come up with the same issues about RA that we did about RR, though. I mean, I shouldn't ask that because I don't know. Has your experience been that the uh, concerns from neighbors are the same in RA as they are in RR? I would say no. I think that the most complaints that we received in the program were for parcels in um, RR zone property, particularly the larger rural subdivisions like the 20s uh, up in the Mount Ranch area. Those are the ones where most of the complaints were. Um, and they typically would range from <coughs> 5 to 20 acres in partial size where the problems occurred. Yeah, it was in the smaller case. So. So I'm going through this list, and I only find a few under 20. Not really. And most of those are already less than 10. I mean... Here's one in Glencoe at 10.04, which I, you know, Glencoe is not a tight community, and Glencoe spreads out over a large area, so that could, that's not necessarily, well, there's no downtown to Glencoe. Oh, I, mean, I don't office. know. Oh, and I have a post office in the American Legion. We have a former. Okay, hang on. I'm going to move over a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you grew up in Mokel. No, I know. No, I know, I know Glencoe very well. I used to go up there all the time and stay at my friend's house. So. We'd have a former supervisor disagree with you on that. So, Peter, if we, whatever number we pick, we have the option of saying, hey, if you've got, you know, if you're non conforming on our area, let's say we said 20, but you're at 16, um, they could come in and apply for so an AOP. We can make that. That's and then it's, then, it's a, then it's a combination. It's not by right, but there's a process. Somebody might be able to get something done. Is that, is that correct? That's an option we could do. Um, 
I would set probably a minimum parcel size. So say if you're between 10 and 20, but if you're less than but 10 acres, you probably wouldn't like want to okay, set well, at all. Okay, I'd go. And the ones are I'd too small. Support that. Minimum 10 in RA. I mean, I, you go down the whole list. With um, a um, administrative point. use permit. So if you've got more than 10 acres, you're by right? I don't know about that. No, yeah. we're just saying. A minimum. Don't, don't apply for anything. So you could say, we could say between 10 and 20 acres on RA with a administrative use permit. And then you take into, you're taking into consideration the same things that we're grappling with, with 20 acres or R. And then anything Except over 20 acres would be uh, by right. Yeah, because he said RAs are not causing a problem. I think I'd like to take a look at the, the land use map a little closer. Um, I'm okay, but I want to make sure that RA is what we can do between located. now and the follow-up session would be to quantify these. And again, it's going to be, my understanding it's it's only those who previously qualified that get to do it at least at this stage. We're yes. only talking about. That small group, of people. right? Yeah. Yes, that's that's our and, control and, for the land. And let's make it really clear for anybody who's watching out there: we're only talking about that group of people. So no green rush, doors are not open. We are staying within these boundaries. The other the other point too is is that when you're looking at those RAs in a smaller part, you need to know what the adjacent parcels look like. Yeah, I, and, I agree and, with that. So. I, Maybe that's something we need to delve deeper into at the next okay. study session. Now that we know what we're Can looking. you kick yeah. us a map, Peter? Can I'm you kick us a map with the these the parcels yeah. somewhere oh, on there? Yeah. Even if we had a big map, we'd just, mm -hmm. we can yeah, look. We, yes, we, we, we could develop a map. That's, that would be very useful. More work. Okay, um, two more questions. Um, premises versus parcels. Do we want to allow more than one cultivation site um, on a parcel of land? Co-location. Co-location, yes. Provide the land. Provide the lands large enough? Absolutely. I think that streamlines the process for any inspections and keeps them grouped together in certain areas. So if it's a large enough parcel that gives them an area to co-locate at and that, that brings it out more areas out around the county. I think co-location is a very good idea. Supervisor Mills? I would have to agree. <laughs> Supervisor Callaway. Yes. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I agree, and I, I agree specifically because I want people who are not going to qualify to have the opportunity to co-locate with somebody else. Um, and I agree, it's much more efficient for us. We heard that in, in the last iteration of this. Um, but I think we ought to have a minimum size of a parcel to be eligible for co-location. Maybe that's something staff can help us work through. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure out the nuances of how that correlates with the state licensing scheme. But um, what I understand is co-location, uh, more than one cultivation site. And we'll probably come, want to come up with some standards, but I think it's, uh, we'll, we'll work on that, come back with a recommendation to you on that. Um, you know, if you're going to have, you know, is there a minimum? You can't do that unless you're over 40 or something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll I mean, hold that one over through I, a little bit. I mean, I, frankly, I, since we did this whole dance a couple of years ago, you know, the more we could put on, a, on a, concentrating it, the easier it's going to be on everybody in the long run. Also, you know, if somebody's getting bumped out of their property, obviously, you know, we'll have to figure out the state regs to do that. But um, it gives people an option where they might be able to lease rather than buy. But we'll have to work through those details. But mm -hmm. co-location, yes. Okay, and then I guess the last question, and That's it's really, it, it's, it really gets into the weeds, but I think that um, the broader 
overall scope of this is to what degree do, do you want to rely on the state regulatory process and how much do we want to have of our, of our own where they are already looking at things. For example, a water board permit is required um, for the state licensing. We had required the, um, I'm going to blank on what the term was, the... Uh, Central Valley. Yeah, for, from the, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, there is a, a permit, uh, authority, not authority to construct, but um, they had a term for it, I'm just drawing a blank on it. Um, but, and they had to provide that to us um, as a part of our permitting process under the urgency ordinance. Um, that's now required at the state permitting. And so for them to get a state license, they have to demonstrate compliance with all the water board requirements. Do we want to review that ourselves to ensure, or do we want to rely on the state uh, for that? And there are a number of issues uh, that they require. Um, landowner consent, they require that. We would want that anyway. I mean, there are certain things that we want that if we're issuing a permit, we need to make sure there's an indemnity agreement signed by the landowner and the applicant to indemnify the county. Doesn't matter what they do for the state, we will want that. Um, there is um, no sale of alcohol or tobacco from a premises. Now, that's probably not an issue with cultivation, but um, it could be an issue with um, a dispensary or retail establishment. Um, they require certain labor agreements. There's OSHA standards they need to meet. Um, obviously, one of the big issues is the background check process. Uh, Captain Macedo brought that up. They clearly want to have their own uh, background check process and have the authority to approve or deny um, based on qualifying standards that the sheriff establishes. Um, but the state has their own background check process. <coughs> so this is sort of the, the bigger overarching question that will probably need to come back with very mm -hmm. specific questions for you. What about this issue? What about that issue? And sort of a yes, no, or menu of you know, cappuccino or espresso um, to, um, you know, as we, when we come back. So, so we'll start with the question of state regulations are our own. Right. Easy one. I'll, I'll start. Uh, state regulations, I don't want to add a layer of bureaucracy or reciprocate work that's already been, been, being done, because that will only be an added cost to the county. And I do understand with the background checks, the state is providing other jurisdictions the background checks so that we, that the Sheriff's Department doesn't have to reciprocate it. If you could check into that and add that to our questions in the next meeting, I would appreciate that because if the Sheriff's pr are provided that through the state because they're already doing it anyways, why don't we save them the work time and the money on doing it? I think I think the sheriff has a valid reason why he wants to retain that control. <clears throat> and so for that question, definitely it has to stay in local control. Mr. Rice County? As much as we can put on the state, I want to put on the state because that's where we're sanguine to anyway. And if not this year, it'll be next year. So let's <coughs> adopt the state rules or the state can adopt us. In terms of the sheriff uh, doing duplication, um, I was a bit concerned when he, uh, Captain Macedo said that could take anywhere from two weeks to a month plus. Um, that's one of the holdups that happened. I'd want to know specifically what is it that the state is, and this would be a question really for the SO's office, not for you, but I think what is it that the SO's office wants that's separate from what the state is doing? Uh, Captain Macedo said that it was sort of general. My understanding is that the state background check is not general. So I'm not interested in having a duplication of effort. If there is something specific, um, I'd be okay with that. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, do you remember back when we were discussing this before, they were concerned about not having the ability to do a triple I? Do you remember those that terminology coming up? No, I don't remember exactly. And, and that was one of the things, because they were not able to do a background check for other states. It was only for within, and the state of California doing a background check, that's all it's going to be is for the state of California. So somebody coming in here 
from another state is going to test clear on the state's check. That's the concern that the sheriff had way back in January of 2018, and I don't want to go back down that road. We're ta we are talking about people that have already been vetted. And so now we're going to vet them again. I mean, not that we shouldn't see if they got, I don't know, a, a I don't think DV was, or something yeah. like that. We are talking about a really small group of people that have already been vetted, and now we're going to go through that process again. I, I find that a little redundant unless it's necessary. They have to go back through the state security check anyway. So now we're going to go do the same thing that we did before. Can I adjust my comment a little bit? Stop. State regs, when it, comes, when it comes to the sheriff's background check, I would like his comment to it next meeting so that we can get exactly what he wants so we can address that specifically. Okay, so Peter, it sounds like state regs with the caveat that we need to work out the background check issue with the sheriff. And I think part of that's going to be finding out exactly what's entailed in the state background check, how that coincides with the background checks that we've already done, and if there's a process forward. It may just be, uh, rather than the sheriff doing the background check, they just have a sign-off. Say, yeah, this was done correctly. But let's have the sheriff back in when we take that on. But other than that, I think it sounds like state regs. Is them three, three of us. That work? Yeah. You ready to stop it? Yeah, I'm fine with that. You ready, Calloway? You ready, Mills? I got no. your position. No. <laughs> All right, we've got some fours here. We had a couple of Peter, next question. So um, I just want so to make sure that we understand uh, this. With the exception of the background check issue, for the most part, where the state is handling an issue, you just to keep that with the state and not duplicate the efforts here at our local level. Now, as we craft the first draft of the ordinance, we may come up with issues, and we'll bring those back to you uh, at the next next study session. Thank you. Are there questions? Um, Oh, lots of them, but I think that is probably I it enough for now for that, that I mean, we will have a series of further questions, I know, as we come back to the next study session. Um, and I, I guess what I'd like to ask is what is the expectation for us to bring back to you at this next study session? Is it a first draft with some holes in it that need to be filled up? Is it just simply... Uh, another list of questions that are, are more specific with very clear either yes, no, or a menu of, of, um, of options before you that we can then write the ordinance on. Supervisor Cowley. I think it's um, prudent upon us to answer the questions that staff needs to draft the ordinance but to draft something, give it to us, and then we play volleyball with it, I don't think that's fair to okay. any of us. I'd rather we go through what it is you believe we need to then, then put forth the ordinance. Um, I would like to reciprocate uh, what I believe Jack and Dennis brought up is a, a map with with, that shows us the adjacent parcels with what we've proposed so far. And then also uh, an agenda item that lays out the new questions as you're going to put them forth so that we can do our homework. And I think that about covers everything, including what Marita said. Supervisor Mills? Yeah, the goal should be that the staff has to thoroughly understand the direction of the board before you craft anything. Because you might find that just the answer to one question will toss, make toss salad out of what you're trying yeah. to do. Yeah. So let's be sure that we get all of the questions answered before we set even council to work on trying to figure out how to make this, the verbiage fly. Right, right. right. I, I agree. Um, I think we have to uh, answer some of these questions, but also... Uh, I will put people on the spot because I'm going to want to know what the consequences or unintended consequences of these decisions are as best we can. And then we'll obviously we'll have public comment where we'll get more informed on what we're actually doing to people or doing for people. Yeah. 
we will do our best to bring all that back to you. If I could make one other thing, I think we should discuss and set expectations for a general timeline so that people can plan their lives. Um, Peter, do you, we have, obviously we have another study session, we have to bring back an ordinance. We have to discuss the ordinance, we have to vet the ordinance, there's gonna be discussions about that. It's gonna have a certain amount of time to go into effect. What's your, you know, also knowing that the board's, the board's priority is the general plan, to tell us how some of these puzzle pieces fit together. Well, okay. Let you know what my workload is right now. I am trying to review the final edits to the final EIR. Uh, they're sitting on my computer right now. Um, then I will need to prepare reports of the Planning Commission, findings, a lot of documents to move forward with the adoption of the general plan. Uh, that should be my number one priority. Um, I have some Commitments that I will be out of the office for some time in the next couple of weeks, not the entire time, but, um, and then it's gonna take some time to package all this up to bring back something comprehensive enough for you to you know, get those specific questions and have time to review those, to think about them, to do research, whatever you need to do with those questions, develop the map, all that information. Um, I don't think we can get that done and have a study session until April, sometime in, in maybe the end of March. But that's the same time that we're looking at trying to schedule hearings for the Planning Commission with the, on the general plan. Um, we're in the middle of February right now, pushing towards the end. Um, we're probably looking at the end of March to start hearings on the general plan. Um, even if we didn't do that, we had all the direction we needed right now, we'd probably be looking at, at the absolute earliest of having an ordinance in place would be late July. Given public hearing requirements, preparation of an addendum to the EIR, if that's what we're going to use, we still need to discuss that internally. Um, notice for the Planning Commission, hearing for the Planning Commission, assuming they only take one hearing and don't want to you know, debate it further, uh, then notice for the board hearing, um, you know, packaging it up together and getting it, you know, on your agenda. And then there's a 30-day uh, time frame for an ordinance to become effective. We also need to consider a fee. How do we, co how do we cover the cost of this? There's a 60-day waiting period for a fee to go into effect. And so we need to talk, all the, plan all the department heads need to figure out What's my, what's my budget going to be for this? What's it going to cost us to do this? Do a cost analysis uh, to figure out you know, how much this is going to be. We pulled a ballpark figure of $5,000 when we adopted the urgency ordinance. I think that that money all would have been spent had we completed the process, um, but because we stopped short, there were uh, incomplete uh, review of, of some applications, we're now refunding some of that money. Um, I think that's a, a reasonable um, assessment, but I don't have any way to back that up given what we have now. We need to know the numbers of applications we're likely to receive and how that's going to affect every department. So we're gonna have to come up with a budget, a cost estimate, uh, and then have a fee adopted by resolution that doesn't go into effect for 60 days. The thought of having a cultivation, an outdoor cultivation season this year is not realistic, to be frank. I know that's what a lot of people wanted, and certainly people in the audience, um, but the reality is I don't think we can get there from here. Um, we will do what you want us to do, but there is a lot on our plates. We've got budget season coming up. We'll all be working on next year's budget. Uh, there's a lot of work that the county has to get done. Uh, I've got a housing element with a due date from the state that's in June. Um, you know, those are all very important things that you know, we can't let slip. Um, so um, I just, I want to be frank about the reality of how we can do this. Um, and I think realistically now that we've added um, an additional study session, um, and if it's going to be worthwhile, we need to spend some time preparing for it. You know, the three of us will have spent a great deal of time going through those regulations, figuring out what it is that needs to be done, um, preparing maps, preparing additional reports, list of questions. Um, 
you know, we're probably looking at towards the end of summer for this to, to become effective. And then we have to stand up the staff to do this, to process all these applications. Yes, and time. then we need time to, you know, depending on the numbers that we, you know, is it going to be, you know, 40, 50, 120? I don't know. I need to crunch those numbers first to find out how many people do you think are we going to, you know, have apply for a new county um, authorization permit, whatever we want to call it. Um, and I think what I heard from the board, and I certainly heard a lot from the public and from the department heads, was that you know, we want to make sure that you know, these authorizations, that they meet today's criteria, not just the fact that they had an old uh, registration, but do they meet today's standards? Have they, um, you know, have they fallen out of compliance, or were they never quite in compliance anyway, even though they were issued a registration? So that's going to take time to process you know, the number of applications that we get. One of the things I might suggest we do, Peter, is um, you know, while we're in this interim between study sessions, it may be good to send out a letter to all the applicants to find out who's still in the pool. I mean, we've got people who are on here, but maybe they don't want to play anymore. Um, and sort of get a feel, knowing that you know, we're not going to get anything in the ground in 2019. So there may be people in and maybe people out. But uh, I think trying to get some sort of indication so we could get our mind around the numbers <coughs> would be important. It shouldn't be a big task. Less than 200 of them. That should be a board choice because that's going to take some staff. <coughs> Is there anybody else interested in that? Sending a letter. Well, sending a letter, but also the, the staff can review each one of those existing applications that we have in the list right now to confirm whether or not they did comply with the ban. Um, we can do aerial shots to find out whether or not things are kosher and really tone in on what is the number. What is the real number we're looking at and where are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that we have the resources to look at each individual application to see if they're in compliance today. But we just, you know, it could be very difficult because we, did, we had a certain timeline that people had to remediate their site. I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, we'll have yeah. to check that out. So. If, is there any opposition to sending out a letter? Just sort of get a ballpark. What's the letter going to accomplish? The letter's going to let us know who's still in, because there may be people on that list that aren't. And also with this new timeline, we'll have to see. If, they, if the board doesn't want to do it, we don't need to spend staff time on it. I, I think it's a little early myself. I'm happy to write the letter and sign it after. I'm fine with the letter. I just, I don't have a, uh, you guys don't give me a printer or postage, so I'll have to use the staff. Um. I mean, it doesn't, it's not a big effort, if, you know, mm -hmm. effort to send out a letter. You guys um, do it all the time for stuff. Whether or not we get, you know, responses, we don't know. Let's see. So, yeah. Those are all my questions. My position on the fee is the county picked a number, 5,000, and didn't do a lot of analysis, I gather. So why not just go with that, with the stipulation to um, an applicant that they sign, that if it's under, you'll get money back, and if it's over, you don't. You'll have to pay the extra, whatever it might be. I mean, I, I just I feel like, why are we the only county that seems to be having so much trauma drama and putting so many roadblocks in? I mean, I wasn't here for the last two years. I just, I'm looking at ordinances from other counties. Some are good, some are adequate. And, you know, I was at California State Association of Counties this last week and they're putting together a JPA of cannabis counties and, you know, lobbying the state on things that help counties. I guess I don't I'm think having... I don't think we're the only ones, and, and I'll be at the uh, County Planning Directors Conference next week, um, and that's one of the big topics of discussion will be how we're handling this new industry. So we're, we're all struggling with, you know, how, how to handle it, 
Uh, some have embraced it, others have taken a slow approach. Um, you know, some are sort of still trying to figure it out, as we are. And so I, I would, okay. I'd like to add in that, you know, with RCRC, I've toured Humboldt uh, with Trinity and served on a working group around Canvas, and we are not unique in struggling with this. I mean, some people are, for as messed up as we may think we are, sometimes there are people who are worse. And so we can take a little comfort in that we're not alone. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Dennis? No. Um, Supervisor Stopper? I'm sorry. Just, just some quick questions. Right now you're giving the general plan to the Planning Commission. And with it going to the Planning Commission, I want them to concentrate on that general plan as much as possible because that has been one of my... Oh. Well, let me start over. With the general plan going to the Planning Commission, I want them to concentrate on that. That is one of my major priorities. Is there an opportunity for us, the board, to take this on while the, while the planning commission is working on the general plan? Does, does this ordinance have to go through the planning commission as part of the vetting? Yeah, for a final adoption, yes, it does. Okay. And it, assuming it's going to be in the zoning ordinance or in the zoning code, which is where it needs to be. Um, then uh, yes, it has to go to the Planning Commission. Any further questions from the board to staff? Any, former, for, any final statements from the staff to the board? Madam Council. Thank you for all the hard work today. Um, Thank you. Let me finish up here. a lot. CAO Lopez. I'm just, um, I'm wondering who's going to set the next, next meeting. Will that be something that we'll inform you of after we work with the clerk of the board? I think we need to work with the clerk of the board and more exact work with planning so that they have the times that they need to do. I think we'd be premature to set that time yeah. at, I this, agree. at this meeting. I agree. I'd like to thank the audience. Um, everybody was extraordinarily polite today. Um, I like the way... I'm proud of the way Calaveras represented itself, with a single exception, which I apologize to the, to the people. And that's not who we are as a county. So, apologize again. Um, we will take this up again. We will have public comment and great deals about that when we get to specific pieces. Um, I appreciate the uh, flexibility and everybody in making the adjustment as we moved into the six o'clock hour. And with no further comments, we stand adjourned. No, we don't. Well, we'll no, we don't. we don't. We don't. What do we have to do? Announce Supervisor announcements. announcements. Supervisor announcements. In compliance with AB 1234, chapter does government code section 53232.3D, board members shall provide brief reports on meetings they attended at the expense of the local agency at the next regular meeting of the legislative body. This report is required to include meetings attended for which there has been expense reimbursement, mileage, meals, lodging, etc., but may also at the board member's discretion include any other meeting attended by the supervisor on behalf of the county. Supervisor Stopper, we'll bring it down the line. <clears throat> Nothing big to report. I worked with staff quite a bit over the last week to get me a lot of the information so I could work today. Um, and I just want to thank Marita for picking up on the uh, Economic Development Committee this Thursday for me while I attend CSAC. Supervisor Mills. Yes, uh, I was at the Bureau of Reclamation in Folsom on Friday afternoon uh, discussing the issues uh, surrounding their operation of New Maloney's, uh, primarily Camp 9 Road. We have some junk cars tipped over the edge of the road. Uh, we are dealing with the, uh, the issue of the natural uh, Bridges Trailhead, and also uh, some future control burns that are going to be occurring at Glory Hole to provide us a buffer uh, for Angels Camp uh, should a fire come out of that area. And they were very willing to to listen and and put things together. They got a CEQA that they're or a NEPA that they're in the process of finishing up. So I'm coordinating with Cal Fire to be sure that that gets accomplished before May June of this year. Uh, I will be in Auburn tomorrow with the Sierra Nevada Conservancy. And then uh, back down here for a uh, uh, camera in the afternoon. That's all I have. Supervisor Cowley. 
I attended the CSAC board meeting last week, and just to <clears throat> just go quickly, we went over the governor's budget, the notable components for counties. It'll be easing the funding burden for IHSS, uh, revamping regional housing goals. Peter, it kind of became clear that housing, and I'm not sure if the governor's comments weren't real clear, but that housing ought to be looked at in the homeless on a regional basis, not just a county, which doesn't match with what we have to do with the housing element. If they're moving into regionalization. You might be talking about that at your planning director's meetings. I'm sure we will. Um, um, and provide f oh funding and resources for disaster response and recovery. The, there was a, an item in the governor's budget on um, investment for housing and homelessness and that they could withhold transportation funding if we don't meet our housing goals. So that might be something that those it's have been things that have been in the works for at um, uh, we're just the recording. legislature. Yeah, we're, I, we're just reporting yeah. out. Sorry, uh, stay within sorry. our within our bumpers. Anyway, that was pretty interesting. It was an eye opener. Um, I will be going to Central Sierra Child Support, and on Sunday, uh, the Old Timers Museum in Murphy's is having a film on cattle, on Murphy's cattle. Uh, from 3.30 to 4.30 at the old grammar school. So if any of you are interested in Calaveras history, I'd recommend that you do that. Oh, and then I'll be going to the graduation for ceremony for the um, AB 109ers, which is very moving to go to something like that. Thank you. Uh, again, I want to thank county staff for all the work they did over this last week. Um, I think we were all very busy with the rains. Um, District 2 took a heck of a wallop. Fortunately, District 2 residents are pretty tough, but uh, even they've got their limits um, to how much mud they could take on the road. Uh, I will be at RCRC uh, for an executive board meeting tomorrow, and we will be meeting with um, the Secretary of Natural Resources, Mr. Crowfoot, which will be a great opportunity. I'm sure you'll be talking about this in your planning meeting, but there's a lot of things going on in the state that people are going to do to us. So we have to stay very vigilant in Sacramento right now or we're going to end up having a lot of things done to us that we don't want. So um, that's my report. Any announcements from CAO? Madam Council? Madam Clerk? I do. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to thank the members of the public who helped us set up the chairs in the room next door earlier today. Your help was very much appreciated. I also wanted to announce that the clerk recorder's office is um, doing promotions throughout the year on special days for weddings, and we did one on Valentine's Day amidst all of the bad weather um, at the museum in downtown San Andreas. We did one wedding. so. Um, if you know anybody who wants to get married on a special day, look for our promotion on that. And uh, if I might add, I think supervisors are available as well. And supervisors may be doing ceremonies. You, no you discount. Come with family no discount. Children for no our discount. schools. <laughs> um, thank you. With no further ado, we stand adjourned. <laughs>